I'm in North Korea right now because last week I was just making some delicious corn dog sushi in Japan and before I could take a bite I heard the nuclear missile warnings go off because Kimmy Jong Un was having a hissy fit and I spilled my corn dog sushi because of him but as I was hiding underneath the table about to be vaporized that's when I realized North Korea is only two hours away so I bought a Kit Kat because Kim Jong Un needs to take a freaking break and a ticket to North Korea so I can tell him to stop doing that anyways I went to the airport and the plane was either on fire or someone just had a vape but anyways once I landed I immediately got on this bus and a soldier's board of the bus and checked my documents and then I was sent through this underground tunnel underneath the border and then I emerged at Kim Jong-un's palace and it was pretty cute for a warmongering dictator. I walked up to the gate and gave it a good old knock but no one was home I guess so I was just walking around when I heard a security alarm go off and I scrambled to find a place to hide so I ducked into this cubby hole and hid there until they were gone and then I snuck out into the bushes and spent hours trying to return to civilization and I ate some blueberries that weren't blueberries. <laughs> hours later I finally found my way out and decided to give up on world peace and just eat the Kit Kat because I was hungry. Sorry Kimmy, stop, stop. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry and then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant and I heard them say on the intercom. In the Greece, Peter, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on inside. So I found a door to the outside but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until i saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it but i had no other way to escape so i put it on to try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things and still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat strokes so i decided to just turn myself in so i went up to a cop and said i'd like to turn myself in and it was a damn utopia cop so i just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped down and, and threw my suit in the river I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes, uh, in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen. But when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these. So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos. And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction, but regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with $150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass-boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes to have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Karen. I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay because I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive through and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeyes. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could succeed successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, <laughs> And I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away, but it said it was disconnected, so I ran over to the drive-thru and our favorite plumber Luigi was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. Every day I bike past this fenced-off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown, but today I decided to explore it, so I went through a gap in the fence, and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere, so I did a little knock and let myself in and close it behind me to be polite to the radiation. Anyways, I went down the stairs and saw, um, some interesting artifacts that I was not exactly a fan of. And I continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe, which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like Rice Krispies. Anyways, I eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said danger do not enter, but I went in because my middle name is Danger. Just kidding, it's Emil. And after I went through the door, it closed behind me and I tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked. So I decided to look around and see what my grave location was gonna look like thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room. And I turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes. And it went a hundred feet down and now 
this is where I live, I guess. And my phone is on 1% uploading this TikTok. So if you see this, that's the last time you're gonna. I was enjoying some fresh strawberries when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I went and answered the door anyways. No one was there, but whoever rang the doorbell had left an egg. It was covered in blue speckles and it was warm. But I decided right then and there, I'm gonna care for this egg until it hatches and be a bird dad. I made a little house for it by grabbing a box and putting grass in it. Then I set up a heat lamp so the egg root would be nice and toasty. But I was getting bored of waiting for him to hatch, so I decided to take him on a walk. Well, it was more of a roll. I taught Eggbert how to skate and showed him to my dog, but then she tried to eat him. And I was like, after a week, my son started to get an attitude. He would just roll away from me when I was talking to him and then go play Fortnite all day. But then one day we started arguing because the place was a chicken coop. And I got so mad, I stormed off. I started feel bad so i went to go say sorry but he was gone i ran outside and i looked everywhere for him i checked the patio i went and looked in the garden i was starting to freak out when <laughs> egbert <laughs> I opened my window for the first time in weeks today to collect a bunch of my fly friends. But they were being very lazy, so I decided to harvest them and put them to work. For example, say I don't want to pay for my $21 breakfast burrito, I simply call my fly babies into battle and leave a body on the plate when I'm finished. Sometimes, for good measure, I'll even put one in the water. Then I call over the manager and tell him that there is not only a fly in my food, but I am gravely allergic to the fly. Then when the bill comes, I change the total to a negative and then they pay me back. Another great reason why you should always carry a bag of dead flies with you is for retail therapy. I want to treat my mom with some makeup, so I simply find a tester and drop a quick friend on it. Then I take it to the front counter and tell them that I could have put a fly in my mom's eye. Then they give it to me for free and I go about my day. But guess what? It even works at Olive Garden. After I'm seated, finally, I get my free breadsticks and I take one into the bathroom and sacrifice one of my babies for the cause. Then once the fly is on the breadstick, I exit the bathroom and walk over to the management and tell them that there is a fly on my breadstick. And boom, refund. So next time you're looking at the poor lost holes on your windowsill, just say, come on, man, it's time to scam. Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop, so obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer, and I was like, that's strange, they're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around, and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store, and I was like, damn, these Amish are gonna be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which- oh, Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and- Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found that they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me, and let me know if I should drive up there and join- I went to Walmart today to buy some Ed Sheeran merch, aka cabbage, because that's probably what he smells like. But when I grabbed my cabbage and went to go pay, I didn't realize I was in the makeup section trying to pay for a cabbage. And they didn't know how to ring up my cabbage, but any freaking ways, the cashier girly dropped my cabbage. And I had to pick it up off the ground, and it was kind of musty looking. But regardless, I left the store and walked home with it, and I was about to start munching on it when it slipped out of my hands and dropped again. And my little cabbage baby started rolling down the hill, and I eventually caught up to it, and it looked beat up. But I picked it up and took a crunchy cabbage bite and decided it would be a good movie snack. So, I brought my cabbage to the movie theater and it was all fun until I remembered I was watching The Quiet Place. And you know what wasn't a quiet place? My insides after eating Walmart cabbage off the ground. It was brewing like kombucha mixed with dynamite in my stomach and I had to leave and go home because it was dead silent in the theater and everyone heard my stomach grumbling. Oh. I was buying some pot, some green, if you know what I mean. I wanted a green pot because I have a plant that lives in a Ziploc. But I came across this perfect pot at the thrift shop, except it had the name Patricia on it. And I thought, oh, a pot named Patricia. It must be empty, right? Not. After I bought the pot and walked off the block, I saw Patricia was still in the pot that I had bought and realized it wasn't a pot, but an urn. When Patricia died, she was burned and then put in this urn and then got donated at this Goodwill location in Woodburn. But she was worth more than the $5 bill that I paid with at the till. I took her home and looked her up and saw she came from Brazil and worked at a bar called the Sawmill in Jackson. Jacksonville. And on her profile was this beautiful hill. And it might be overkill, but I thought Patricia should rest there and not in the potting section at a Goodwill. So I picked her up, plopped her on my bike's sill, and rode my bike to the base of a hill and then pedaled to the very damn top of that hill where I would spread her ashes with all of my will. And Patricia took a little bit of a spill. I was walking to the store when I passed a window with a really cool design in it. And I searched up what that design is, and it's something called Boulette Holes. Anyways, I made it to 7-Eleven, and someone was stealing. Hello? Hello? 
But anyways, I was about to buy eight bottles of five hour energy so I can stay up for a week straight. When I reached into my pocket and my wallet was gone, I told the clerk I couldn't pay and then I panicked and I left. And I was like, where's my wallet? I must have dropped it while I was walking here or something. And that's when I got a notification from my bank saying that someone was making purchases on my card. I ran home to see what they were buying and I opened my laptop and I saw that they had bought 27 boats. And I felt so impressed. I'm Special Agent Ben Deal Maida and welcome back to Catching a Thief. The night before, I placed the wallet right in the view of a camera I had set up. And I followed the thief home using a Bluetooth chip hidden in the wallet. And as I approached the house, I got ready with my flashlight to bust in there. But that's when I got tackled and put in handcuffs. I looked up and the thief turned out to be a different FBI agent. Hello, my name is Den Biel Mehta and this is Catching an FBI Agent Catching the Thief. Today I woke up on Mr. Beast's 35 foot tall inflatable minion that I tried blowing up the night before with my lungs, but my asthma kicked in and I passed out. But anyways, last week he was like, Hey Ben, can you make me the world's largest minion? But I hung up on him because he's not despicable enough. He's like the opposite. He's like philanthropical. But he called back and I was like, he really is despicable. And I agreed to do it. And ever since then, I have been making sure this minion is perfect. So I got the whole factory to line up and take turns blowing it up so I wouldn't be the only one passing out. And I tried to fashion together a giant suit to fit him, but I ran out of fabric and... But finally he was ready. The only problem was when I opened my trunk and tried to fit his body in it, which usually it can fit a few of those, he didn't fit. So I had to ship him in a truck, but I wanted to be along for the journey. So I snuck in while the back door was open and rode in that boy across America until we finally stopped. And I opened the door and... Hey. Hey. Uh, I, I got your minion. Uh, just put it over there. Okay. Today, I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship, and I felt like throwing up until she replied with, I'm in Lisbon. And then she sent the, um, Portuguese flag, I think. I don't know. I'm not good at geometry. But anyways, I wanted to surprise her, so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon, Portugal. So I packed up my stuff and went to the airport, and it was a 30-hour journey, but it was in the name of love. And when I landed, I realized I should probably get her something as a gift, so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section, and I thought, mm, who would want to suck on feet? Oh, me. So I bought them and opened up the box and ate every last Foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun DIY bracelet out of them with hearts on it. So I did just that. And then the next day, I was going to give my crush the bracelet. So I went to DM her and asked her to meet up and realized she said, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. I was inhaling a cheese string when my doorbell rang. Now, I installed a video doorbell last week, so I checked the live feed and there was a box waiting for me. I wasn't expecting any mail other than a shipment of $20,000 of cans of baked beans that I ordered last night from Yugoslavia at 4 a.m., but it couldn't be that. I went to go check it out, and when I opened it, it was full of money, like a million dollars worth. I was like, where did this come from? Until I heard a tiny little voice coming from down below. What? You don't remember selling pictures of me online to random people? I was like, oh, I forgot about the feed pics. So, you're gonna give me some of that, right? Uh-uh, I banged my toe as hard as I could, like, 30 times against the wall. Anyways, now that I'm rich, I wanted to buy a mansion, so I went to the one place where everyone buys homes. Home Depot! I went to customer services, and I told the lady, Hi, I'd like a home, please. And they're like, Sir, this is a hardware store. And that's when my inner Karen came out. I screamed, What the f- <gasps> I've made it a year and a half on this app without swearing. I'll be gosh diddly dang if I slip up today. I love you, Jesus! I wanted to go to Chili's today, but it was burning down. So instead, I went to go get sushi. But it was one of those places where it comes on a conveyor belt and you can take what you want, except for this piece of shrimp that refused to cooperate and wouldn't relate. But it's okay, because they also have a screen you can order from. So I ordered myself some crispy rice and it zoomed by faster than I could say, no officer, I had nothing to do with the Chili's burning down. Anyways, then I saw these nasty cubes that look like Minecraft gravel and I lost my appetite. So I put all the plates down the chute since I was done with them when I wondered what's actually in there. And it said, please don't insert hands or objects. But what did I do? Hit record on my phone and insert it into the slot, which was really smart because then I dropped it down into the chute and had to call over a waiter in shame and he told me that non-plate items go out the garbage chute around back. So I went down this creepy corridor and finally found it and when I grabbed my phone and sat down to check what footage I had recorded, uh, I saw... This morning when I woke up, I reached over to my light to turn it on, and it didn't. At first I thought the bulb died because it's $4 from Ikea, but then I looked at my iPad and it didn't charge overnight. And I realized I don't have any power. So I grabbed four blankets and wrapped myself up to conserve heat. Even though I accidentally left two candles burning overnight, oops, uh, I was still cold. So I decided to go upstairs and make myself a hot beverage to stay warm. And I can make coffee, but that's literally bean water. Uh, or I can make matcha, which is just Shrek's ashes. So I ended up grabbing the matcha because I hate coffee. And I went to grab a cup, but they were all freaking dirty and gross. So I 
boil some water in my kettle, which apparently Americans don't have. Like, let me know if you have a tea kettle or if that's just a British thing. Love. Anyways. Anyways, I poured some matcha. And then the water after it. And then I went to grab the cup and I burned my hand on the glass, which was really fun. And I didn't have any cream because the fridge was warm from the electricity being out. So I took my blankets off and I gave it a test. And mama, let me tell you, it tasted like if dirt had a butthole. I ended up spitting it out. And then I poured the rest out on the concrete. But the water had rehydrated Shrek's ashes and he came back to life. And I don't know if you forgot, but today is November 13th. Yeah, the day the Gummy Bear album's in store. And when I woke up this morning and remembered, I immediately ran out the door and Uber to Target at the crack of dawn to buy it. But when I got there, I went to the CD section only to discover that the Gummy Bear album was nowhere to be found. All that was there was like 5,000 kids bop Christmas albums. And I was so sad until I had an idea. I grabbed every last one of the kids bop albums and paid $100 for all of them. I brought them home and then I opened each and every one of them and took out the CD and put them in my computer so I could erase all the kids bop songs and put Gummy Bear songs on them. Then I put the CDs back in the case and resealed them with plastic wrap and brought them back to Target. And I put them in front of all the boring albums, except you, Ariana. I'd never do you like that. I then went home and felt good about making sure the Gummy Bear album was in stores on November 13th. Until I saw police lights outside my window and I went outside and saw an entire SWAT team. So, um, looks like this is my last post ever, but I still have my Instagram on my prison phone. So go follow me at Ben of the Week and hype up my recent. Okay, bye. Uh. So I was watching my local 7-Eleven burn down today when I saw a shirt or something in the bushes. And when I walked over, I saw it was a Walmart employee uniform that someone just left there. So I decided to try it on, even though it had a stain on it that looked like, uh, milk. <laughs> but that's when I got the idea to go to Walmart and see how long it would take them to notice that I don't work there. And I was just walking around in Walmart as a fellow employee. So the first thing I did was give myself a good employee discount on a few things I found. And then I was looking for something to do when I saw the phone for announcements just sitting there. And I was super nervous, but I picked it up and said, Attention shoppers, everything is free for the next hour. And then I hung up and panicked and tried to find a getaway. And I saw the employees only area. So I went inside and it led me to an elevator, which eventually led me out the main entrance. And when I finally made it out of there, the security was outside with its flashing lights. So I quickly took off my uniform, threw it in the bushes, and... I like to collect mold off of my old moldy bread and put it in a baggie that I keep in my pocket so whenever I'm out and about at an overpriced restaurant getting an overpriced $15 acai bowl, I can order one and then eat the whole thing and then once I'm done, I take out my mold babies and pop one in so I can take it to the register and go full Karen mode and show them the mold and then BOOM BABY! Refund. I've done this in the past with dead flies at Olive Garden, but I like having bread in my pocket instead of dead decaying flies. Anyways, I wanted to give my mom some makeup, so I tried it at Sephora by putting some mold in the makeup, and then I brought the sample to the manager, and I got a free one. And then I sanitized my hands to get the mold off, of course. Anyways, after Sephora, I really wanted some tortilla chips, so I grabbed a bag, opened it up, popped some mold in, and then boom! I took it to the cashier, and I got a refund, baby. And then when I got home, I took a bite and forgot to take the mold out! Boom, baby, mold poisoning. So I was completely legally watching a movie today when I won an iPhone 13. And all I had to do was enter my social security number. So I typed it in. And then a week later, while I was blending my candles together to make a mega candle, I got a notification that a package was delivered. So I ran downstairs to grab it and the packaging was a little strange, but I cracked open the box, which apparently was for the iPhone 14. And then when I opened up that box, they had sent me a toy car. And I was like, I know I didn't just give away my identity for a Hot Wheel. And then I realized it's actually a phone. So I decided to hang up on the 911 one operator that I had panic called and I checked out my new phone and it was pretty cool until I realized it was a used phone and I think the previous owner was someone's grandma because I saw in her text she wasn't just having booty calls but a whole booty conference now I didn't want this phone anymore after going into the images and seeing granny's milkies so I picked it up one last time and checked her contact section and noticed she had her address on there so I grabbed the phone and biked over to her house which happened to be only an hour away and when I got there um granny is on her Jeff Bezos type B. So I decided to put my name in her contacts and then I threw the phone over the fence and I'll let you know if I slide. So my dad loves mangoes, so for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it, because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper, and I wrapped it as something completely different, and then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed, and it started to smell really bad, and when I checked it, the mango had molded! So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper, so I got in my car, and I drove back to Walmart, and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword, and I was swinging it around, but I accidentally killed Killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn and I said, Arby's, we have the meat. Anyways, I got home and I cut up the mango. I grabbed a random DVD case and I put all the mango slices in it. But my aunt's cat tried eating it. Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. What? 
Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down. And I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... Today, I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine and Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed a container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell, and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it, and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper, and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper, and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit up. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and released the hatches and he kicked it away. But then he got up and chased me inside and I closed the door and I thought it was safe. And oh, I forgot to turn the stove burner off and... Today, I snuck an AirTag tracking device into an Ed Sheeran concert so that I could somehow stick it onto him to track him down because that's for the FBI. No. Anyways, randomly BTS opened for him and then Eddie was about to come on stage. So I had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed, I walked up to the front of the stage, locked onto my target and bam, it flew through the air. And now I know there's no way of it sticking to him. However, they have to pack up the stage and it's probably gonna travel with him. So anyways, I saw Doja Cat and Lil Nas X and then left the concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder, and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So I flew to Las Vegas, and when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him, but the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane. So I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um... Yeah. I was enjoying some banana on the cob when I realized lockdown is over here. So I got in the car, hit the gas, and drove to the closest thrift store, and I went thrifting. When I walked in the thrift store, I passed by the toy aisle, and there was a doll on the bottom shelf playing this really creepy song. And I know some dolls are cursed, but it's only $2, and the demon can keep me company, so I bought it. My mask is falling. Anyways, I brought it home, but when I looked at it again, I noticed there was a note attached to the bottom that read, Make a wish or you'll float too! And I thought, <laughs> that's Pennywise's line. This doll's gonna get sued for copying the movie It before it possesses me. But I do be scared of demons, though. So I wished for the first thing that I could think of, which was an air fryer. Then after making my wish, I went to bed. I woke up the next morning to the birds chirping the sunshine and ah! 300 pound air fryer on my chest crushing me to the point where I couldn't breathe. I finally got it off and thought, you know what, Mr. Demon? Think of the air fryer. It's not exactly how Amazon would have delivered it, but I like your vision. Then I realized I have another wish left. I was thinking, what do I want more of? <gasps> some fire shoes. So I said, I want some fire. You want fire? <laughs> I was picking the ticks out of my dogs first so I could collect them and inject them with acid until they popped. But just before I could even get to doing that, my phone went off. And when I checked it, my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them. So I dropped what I was doing and I met them at the roller derby rink. Now I paid $10 to rent some skates, but listen, these babies were impossible to put on. And when I stood up, it felt like I had fettuccine noodles for legs. But it was actually really fun, except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me and I'm allergic to small children. So I tried to avoid him at all costs. But then he got too close to me and I ran him over. And in the distance, I heard some lady who I think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown fetus. I so I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall, but I could still hear her screaming in the distance. So I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully he snuck me out of the mall. And um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So. <laughs> So I was going through my local Taco Bell drive through when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych, bitch. 
I went to Michael's and spent two hundred dollars on crap. Cause last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes, so I grabbed one of those. And then there was a bunch of fake fruit, and I saw they had fake bananas, so I bought a fake banana. But when I went to pay, the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if I still wanted the bitten banana. But I bought the bitten banana anyways. And then when I got home, I broke the box open because I don't own scissors. And look, it came with these fun goggles. Uh, anyways, next I went to my garage to find a hammer, and then I put the geode on the ground and smashed it, and that baby blew open. And it looks kind of like a fruit gusher, so um, please let me know in the comments if I can eat these or not. Thank you, bye. I cut my own hair a few days ago, and as I was throwing it away, I realized I can sell this. Maybe someone wants to buy my hair, just like how I bought a bottle of Harry Styles toilet water. So I dug through the trash, grabbed some hair, packaged it up in a baggie, and then snapped a picture and listed it for sale. I waited two whole days, and no one bought it, so I changed the name to Famous TikToker Hype House Toe Hair, and instantly they were flying off the shelves. In two minutes, I had outsold every merch line that ever existed combined. But wait, I need more hair. I called everyone I know to come over and hang, but when they got there, I cut all their hair off and took it. Business was booming, and I became richer than Jeff Bezos, and I was the world's first trillionaire. Until one day, someone said they were returning the hair. And when the package arrived, it was me? There was a note on the box that said, You gave me better than we care, not a famous TikToker's hair. So I was shocked to see when I cloned it, it made you and not a sway boy or something. Okay, first of all, what are you trying to clone a sway boy for? That sounds illegal. On the bright side, now I have a clone to take all my Instagram pics for me so I don't have to face my crippling insecurities myself. So if you want to go check out his Instagram, I mean my Instagram, my Instagram is better than we. Today, I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car. So I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can play plug it in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger. So now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, genuinely considering eating my Cheez-Its that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come, obviously. My favorite thing to do right now is guess people's passwords of their social media accounts because I've actually managed to successfully hack a few accounts. And I also enjoy changing some captions around without people noticing and tagging myself so people think me and Zendaya are besties. So today I managed to log into Sean Mendez's account and then I decided to DM some people some pickup lines like Olivia Rodrigo, which might have made me responsible for him and Camila Kabubu breaking up, but anyways, today I wanted to get into Instagram's Instagram account to, I don't know, post a picture of myself or something. And then I remember the guy who owns Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg. So when I tried logging in with a bunch of different passwords and none were working, I realized it kept asking me if I'm not a robot. And since old Marky Poo is a robot, I left it blank and then boom, I was in, baby. And I was stressed about what I should post to like 400 million people. So I just chose this random picture of me at the beach and now half a million people have liked it. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for the validation. So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because I filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face and got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth I was trying to sell my kidneys on the black market when I got an ad for Shein Eats, and apparently they sell food now. So I ordered some Mexican food because I was really hungry. But when it arrived, it came in what looked like a reused tissue box, and it had a fragile sticker, but it was looking more like a burrito bowl at this point. Anyways, I compared it to the picture in the ad, and it looked nothing like it. But the worst part is there was corn in it, and I'm allergic. And I was beyond mad, so I looked at the shipping label, and it said it was shipped all the way from China. So you know what I did? I was on that next flight to China, and after I boarded the plane next to the world's biggest Facebook mom with this suitcase, the food was actually pretty good, a little bit better than Shein's. But anyways, when I landed, I remembered it was the Olympics here in Beijing, so I decided to go to that instead of getting revenge on Shein. Happy Valentine's Day. Aww.
This is me buying a live crab from the store and freeing it into the ocean. The guy at the store was like, you know how to cook this, right? And I was like, oh, we are not cooking Mr. Krabs. As I was walking, some dude yelled at me and I got scared. And then this guy was walking around with an iguana. I'm like, it's my day to have an exotic pet, buddy. Look at his cute little mouth moving. Aww. I took him to the Santa Monica Pier before I freed him. And that's when I saw this guy literally kick a pigeon. I hate it here. Now, crabs can live 24 hours outside of water. But I thought, let's just free him already. Then some cops are staring at me and I got scared. I picked him up and I run to the beach. And I laid him down gently on the sand. He was barely moving. So I ran into the waves to try and get him in deeper so he could swim or something. But he took a bit of a tumble. So it wasn't looking good for Mr. Krabs. And I started crying. But then then he started moving again and I thought it's now or never. I scooped Mr. Krabs up and I ran over to that water and I dropped him in that water ever so gently. Oh crap, we are out of time. Um, if you want to see the rest of the video, uh, the link is in my bio. So I don't know if you saw, but Little Nos X released these new Nike shoes that have a drop of real human blood in them. But I thought the colors were cute, so I ordered a pair of them. And while I was waiting around for them to arrive, I saw a lot of Karens were mad about it. And I was trying to figure out why, because having spare human blood on you at all times would be so helpful. Like if I was ever, I don't know, walking back from Taco Bell and a Toyota Prius smashes into me. And I'm lying on the ground like, dang, this is kind of awkward. Also, I'd probably be dying to need a blood transfusion. In that moment, I could just pop my shoe off and use my shoe blood and be completely fine. Then I could grab my food that I dropped from being hit by a car and find a nice bench to eat my taco on. Until I realize I'm currently on church property and I'm wearing my Lil Nas X Satan shoes and- Uh oh. I was crying face down on the floor in my plate of taquitos because I can't figure out how to do any TikTok dances, but they look so fun. When I try and follow one, it feels like I'm reading Japanese while blindfolded, but today I'm changing that. It is unacceptable that I have 5.5 million TikTok followers and have never posted a dancing video. So today I'm learning one and I'm not stopping until I get it. I chose to do Yodeling Haley's dance to Money Trees because it just looks so fun and easy. And it's definitely fun, but after sweating so much that I had to change shirts three different times, my conclusion is that it is not easy for me. I got the first part down where it's like, get this dough. But then I watched it over and realized I'm missing a huge part. The facial expressions. I look like I'm in pain when I dance. But I can't be looking like I just ate a candle and haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks if I want this dance to look good. So I forced myself to smile in the mirror for an hour straight so I don't look constipated. And then I tried the dance again and I got it. Like I actually got it. And I just posted it on this account. So uh, tell me how it did. I'm a Canadian and this is my Canadian passport. And this is my Canadian passport picture. Uh, and for some reason, I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America. Cause I'm stupid and I just really wanted some good American fast food. Anyways, I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest purge movie. So I packed up my Jojo Siwa poster, my Rainy Rodriguez shrine, and my favorite toilet seat. And I left my room for the very last time and walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada. And as I was sitting on that bus, I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok. So I freaked out and I got off the bus and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada and it was $4,000, but I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs and I got in and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. I was getting my teeth fixed today because last week I tried one of those bang energy drinks that all those TikTokers promote and it tasted like urine and made my teeth fall out. Anyways, as I was sitting there, I accidentally popped out the ushy gushy thing that was sitting at the back of my throat and it fell on the floor. So I picked it up off the ground and popped it back in without wiping it off or anything. But then when I got home, I felt something sharp in my mouth and noticed I had a fingernail glued to my tooth and I flipped my shit. I was so grossed out and I tried ripping it off, but it was stuck on. And then I tried using a fork to scrape it off, but that didn't work. And then I tried playing dentist and all I did was knock out another or two. And then I realized I need something powerful to get it off. So I walked over to the local power plant near me to try and zap it off. And I climbed up a power line and bit down on it when zap! I woke up and I checked my lip and the fingernail was gone. And I was so happy. So I grabbed my phone and boom, a lightning bolt shocked me. And that's when I realized the power line had given me powers. And I was Mr. Electrodad. <laughs> I woke up at 4 a.m. to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today, but when I opened it up, I saw he's been scooping it out the jar in a really strange way, which is really inefficient because there's just more surface area for it to dry out. But anyways, I wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich, but I felt like it needed some raspberries. So as I was taking the bread out of the fridge, I knocked out the raspberries. But I believe in the five minute rule instead of the five second rule. So I scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich and I added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese. And then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny and I thought I was having an allergic reaction 
addition to the peanut butter. But then I remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest. And I just ate an ounce of oh. So I grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control. But they were closed because of Thanksgiving. And I was like, damn, I'm really going to puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621. So anyways, I decided I should probably write my will. And I opened up my notes app and said, all my money and my plant collection and my life-size Zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog. Thank you and goodbye forever, I guess. So I bought this busted robot vacuum off of Wish, and it hardly works, like, at all. But I felt bad that it's trapped in my house all day and has to eat these nuts off the floor. Has to eat both of these nuts. <laughs> Anyways, I was always wondering what would happen if I just set it loose in the street So I took it outside and set it free by bringing it outside and walking it And I got a few weird looks from people, but they weren't walking their vacuum pets Which makes them look like the idiots Anyways, I was following it and I noticed it was actually leading me to this warehouse And I was really scared to go in, but Bofa brought me here So I opened this huge door, which led me down a weird hallway And that's when I realized little Bofa had taken me to the NASA headquarters Because I was hearing some weird, strange song playing And water began to pour in and I started panicking as it started to fill up and that's when I heard a voice on the intercom say, What do you feel like? And that's when it clicked and I said, An astronaut in the ocean! And that is how I was selected to become the first TikToker chosen by NASA to go to space. I was giving palm trees high fives because like our hands are palms and palm trees are palms So what if every time we pass one we're leaving it hanging because its palms are out and it's expecting a high five And it gets sad and it drops all its coconuts and one falls on an elderly person Uh, anyways, I got home and saw that I had some weird goo on my hand from touching all the trees And I couldn't wash it off or scrape it off and like hand sanitizer wouldn't even dissolve it And I was so confused what it was and that's when I realized it's a squished ant But it kind of smelled like go-go squeeze applesauce so I took a lick of it and Let me tell you these spicy Boys. So now I was addicted to ants, and every single day after that moment, I would take a straw to the cracks of every sidewalk in my neighborhood, sucking up ants, and they are pure protein, so I became so strong, and I was so powerful, my muscles became so big, next week I'll be doing my first UFC fight, wish me luck! Today I went to go get the Moderna vaccine, and it hurt a little bit when they gave it to me, but afterwards I went home and I took the band-aid off, but as I was peeling it off, I noticed something hard was underneath, and when I pulled it out and looked at it, I saw a microchip, I'd been microchipped, I thought that was fake, but I had to get to the bottom of this, so I grabbed a microchip adapter and put it in my phone, and a folder came up saying, we see you. And in it was a picture that said, meet Candace at 42 Wallaby Way at 2 p.m. And I was really scared, but the next day I went to the address on my bike, and it ended up taking me to this huge building, and I found my way in. But as I was looking around, there was no one there, so I shouted, Candace, who's Candace? And all of a sudden, the lights went out, and I felt something grab me. Next thing I knew, I woke up in a chair tied up. I was so confused, and I shouted, who is Candace? What is Candace? Then, out of the darkness, he appeared, and he said, ah! Candace did. Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and then ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me. So I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. GREEN BEANS, BABY! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy, because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed, next to the beans, which she has three- Oh no, I got beans in my- Today, I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were right next to the not-so-swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. For the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. 
So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, see you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. Anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number. One, two, three, four. But then the next day, I heard the door unlock, and then someone came downstairs, and they were in a black hoodie and black jeans, and I thought they were gonna kidnap me, but I welcome the stalker. I haven't had a human interest in me in months, so I asked them to come cuddle with me, but they looked so caught off guard when I asked them to come under the blankets. And then I guess I out-creeped the creep when I tried to lick his toes, and that's when he ran away. My stalker doesn't even want me, bruh. So I bought this doggy camera to spy on my little worm creature, and when I was checking the cameras today, I saw that when she comes through her doggy door, a literal rat has been following her in. And not only that, I caught them canoodling, and I had to shoot a tree to her to break them up so I could go rescue her from Remy the Rat in my hell's not paying rent. Anyways, I was horrified, and ever since, she's been giving me, uh, rabies vibes, the way she's been kind of foaming at the mouth and trying to bite me. So I took her to a discount vet clinic at the back of a dollar store, and they weighed her little fat butt and then put her on the table. And I told them I think she has rabies And that's when they pulled out three humongous needles And then they took her into the back rooms And I'm not an anti vax or anything But she was screaming so much I was like, bring my girl back And I grabbed her and brought her home And now she just has a little bit of rabies But it's fine Because she just likes to give me love bites uh -huh. Today I gave myself a terrible haircut Because my hair had the wingspan of a pterodactyl Before I started, I needed to get prepared So I put a garbage bag on myself to keep the hair off But then I realized I looked like a spawn of Lucifer And I couldn't stop cry laughing But then I parted my hair and started I didn't want to see the damage I was doing, so I didn't look, and I cut it as if Helen Keller was giving herself a haircut. I accidentally cut off too much, and I thought it was bad enough until the scissors started getting stuck in my hair, and then I got it out, and then the scissors got stuck again. At this point, I'd pulled out more hair than I had cut, and I looked like an egg, so I decided to just give up and take the clips out. And when I pulled them out, I looked like an Oompa Loompa. I did cut a lot of hair, but I kind of liked how it turned out until I realized I missed a spot. And then I just started cutting pieces for fun, and then I cut too much off, and <sighs> dang it, we're out of time. But if you want to see what happened, the video is on my channel, and the link is in my bio. I was putting my clothes in the dishwasher today because I broke my washing machine when I tried washing dishes in it last week because my dishwasher was broken in the first place. But anyways, I was in the kitchen and heard a snowball hit my window and when I looked out the window, my elderly neighbor Myrtle had put up a sign that said, check your mail. Now, as threatening as that seemed, I was so excited because her son owns the website where you watch corn with a pea. And in the past, she's given me like a thousand dollars at Christmas and a cute little picture of herself. So I went to the door and grabbed the card and when I opened it, I noticed that this time there was no gift, which is fine and all, but also the picture she had sent me had some mail man's hand in the corner and on the card there was weird capitalization so i highlighted the capital letters and it spelled help me and i started freaking out so i drove over to her house which was 50 feet away sorry greta thunberg and i was gonna save her from being choked but um when i got there there was a van outside that said uh 50 shades of play and i think that's what what myrtle's into so now i'm traumatized I squeezed a whole bottle of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes. And also, I wanted my hands to be soft for the date that I was going on today. I was late, so I ran upstairs, turned on the security system, and I was about to head out the door when I couldn't turn the knob. My hands were so lusciously moist from the moisturizer that they were just slipping and sliding off the knob. And I started freaking out because my security alarm would call the authorities if I didn't get out in 30 seconds. So I tried drying them off by rubbing them on my pants, but they still didn't have any grip. So I tried putting them in rice, and they were still too slippery. And then I looked at the security system, and I just threw Three seconds left, so I fell to the ground crying, not knowing what to do. Until I remembered the driest thing in my house. Mm, my cat's ashes. I grabbed the urn and covered my hands in the dust, and I headed for the doorknob, and luckily it worked. I turned it, opened it, and... Yeah. I woke up today and decided to go to Claire's to get my ear pierced because I saw they're doing it free if you give them your organs. So I walked in and I picked my piercing and then signed away the rights to my kidneys. And then they marked the ear that I wanted pierced and then boom, they legally stabbed me. But anyways, I went home and I was so excited to take off my mask and see it and they had pierced the mask string into my ear hole. And I started freaking out, of course, and needed to get it off. So I tried finding pliers or something, but I grabbed scissors and used them to cut the mask off so it doesn't rip my ear off. And then I looked in the mirror and I thought, maybe it looks cool but it didn't. So I grabbed my computer to try and find the Claire's customer service line so I can sue them. But they closed at 6 p.m. and it was 6.30. So I went to bed and cried myself to sleep. And when I woke up, oh, it was infected. So now I think my ear is gonna fall off in two to five business days. So please let me know what music I should listen to before I have one ear left.
Today, I was in the drive through line at Starbucks trying to get the Donald Trump drink, which is just a cup that's full of sad old man tears. But as I pulled up, I was feeling generous, and I told the barista, can I pay for the order in front of me? And the Starbucks employee said, that's so sweet. Let me bring that up for you. Would you like anything else? So I said, uh, can I get a cake pop and a white hot chocolate? But that's when the barista said, that comes up to $94.24. I stopped and said, what in the star f did you say? And the barista told me they ordered seven drinks, four pastries, and a travel mug. So I told the barista, hey, uh, I'm actually just getting at the cake pop. But the person ahead of me had already driven away and they told me I had to pay or the cops would be called. So I pulled up and paid, but I wasn't gonna stop until I got my travel mug. I followed the car until it parked and I approached the window and I said, give me the mug. Anyways, look at my $94 Starbucks travel mug that I had to pry out of a sucker mom's hands. I was sucking grapes into my mouth as a snack when I realized these grapes haven't been washed yet. And you know what's on unwashed grapes? Chemicals and bugs. You know what gives Spider-Man his powers? A bug covered in chemicals. I suddenly felt nauseous and had to throw up, but I felt something. I shot a web out of my wrist and flushed the toilet. And that's when I realized I have powers. Think of all the things I can do now. I can free Joe Exotic. I can fling the girl who sings Dance Monkey into the orbit of the sun. I went to the grocery store and picked up more grapes to fuel my power. But there was an old grandpa who wasn't social distancing, so I used my web to yank his walker out of his hands. Good luck crawling within six feet of me. When I got home, I immediately inhaled the new batch of superbugs. I felt my power grow stronger. My veins were pumping blood and my heart rate was going the speed of light. But then I blacked out. I woke up from my coma three years later. The whole world was empty from the pandemic and I realized everyone I loved was gone. But then I thought, I can still shoot noodles from my wrist. I'm Spider-Man, baby. I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy, so I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, a solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in, but then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they reminded me what my credit card number is. So I went to the Apple store to go replace all my Apple products that are now fried, but I got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing, and I played some random rats dancing on all the iPhones. But then an employee yelled at me, so I fled with no iPhone, and now I'm trying to catch a bird so I can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since I have no electronic devices left. I was seeing how many oranges I could fit in my mouth before throwing up when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, and when I answered it, there was no one there, just a notebook. It was kind of <laughs> creepy, but when I opened it, I realized it was for my horse school cousin Gretchen, and she'd drawn me, uh, Peppa Pig? I thought I'd draw her something back, so I made, um, two minions in love, and I left it in the same place for her. The next morning, the doorbell rang again, and I opened it to find another Peppa, so I took the liberty of drawing Rainy Rodriguez as my sleep paralysis demon, and put it back the same place as yesterday. Oh, However, the next day I received something completely different. When I opened the sketchbook, Peppa had turned into bacon? Is, is this a threat? I texted her, haha, very funny, Gretchen, stop coming to my house. And she was like, what? And so I replied, Peppa time is canceled, Gretchen. And she replied, I don't know what you're talking about. So, knowing that wasn't Gretchen the whole time, I felt completely terrified, so I watched some seafood ASMR eating and fell asleep. I woke up to my leg burning from my laptop. My hand kind of felt weird, and I noticed I was covered in bacon. Anyways, now I'm completely terrified, and I don't know what to draw in return. Please help. Today, I'm giving $10,000 to the employees at my local Taco Bell. I pulled up to the window and said, Hi, can I get a bean burrito, please? When I pulled up to the window, they gave me the burrito, and I gave them... $2. What do I look like, Mr. Beast? Plus, this box has $30 in it max. Just some Minecraft plush toys and a card if I ever went missing as a child. But then, as I was eating my Taco Bell burrito, I started feeling bad. Maybe the Taco Bell employees have little Taco Bell babies at home that need little Taco Bell diapers or they'll shed their little Taco Bell tears. And I thought, I may not have $10,000, but I can show them I appreciate them. I went home, grabbed some markers, and decided to write a little card telling them how much I appreciate them on being on the front lines of this pandemic and everything. I also thought to add a little something else, since this is already a TikTok, for every 100k likes this video gets, I'll add $10 to the card, up to $100, because I really do not be Mr. Beast. <laughs> I finished the card with some drawings of tacos, because I love tacos, and tonight, I'll head over to Taco Bell and drop it off. I'll see you in part two tomorrow. I was at Staples, because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box, so staples wouldn't fall out anymore, but staples was sold out of all the staples, and I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples, and she said that I could order some more staples from Naples, but this staples had no staples, so I was gonna leave with no staples, but my phone was dying, so I needed a cable, so I walked past April and went to the cables, but the cables were too much, so I just bought a Bagel. And now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables because April from Staples wanted me to choke and as I bit my bagel it had mold and the bagel was fatal and I fell off the table and my last thoughts were of my lover named Mabel when we would sit by the stables and pour Mabel all over our bagels. And as I took my last breath on the floor, 
I saw a steeple. So I was busy trying to carbonate milk with my mom's soda stream and make milk soda when my friend who lives in a different city texts me, come here now. I get really scared when people send a text and end it with a period. So naturally I ignored the text and laid in bed and stressed about it until 30 minutes later when they texted me again. I checked the text and it said, it's an emergency. And I was like, uh, emergency? It's emergency, just like call 911 or something. But then I thought, uh, maybe they're like hamster died or something. So I got up, got all the way in my car, turned on some Harry Styles, but then after 20 minutes of driving, I had to pull over because I was crying too hard. <laughs> to feel better, I switched on Crazy Frog. What's going on on bum, 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 bum. Sometimes when I listen to a really good song in the car, I kind of lose track of how fast I'm going. So while I was in the middle of vibing, um, I saw flashing lights behind me. But then I remembered getting arrested is a choice, and today I choose not to be arrested. <laughs> so it turns out that's actually not my choice, but I did get these really cool mugshot pictures out of it. You should totally go check them out on my Instagram. It's at Ben of the Week. And comment Crazy Frog if you came from this TikTok. Okay, love you, bye. So I had just finished filling out all my private private information and passwords to claim my free MacBook Pro that I won from this one email I got until I heard a knock at my door. I was feeling a little bit scared because it was 3 a.m., but I remembered I gave them my social security number, so that means they are gonna keep me safe. I was gonna go turn my computer off and head upstairs to check the door, but it said that a virus was shutting it down for me? Now, I don't want the coronavirus, but if it's gonna start doing things for me, well then, homegirl can like, get it. I crept upstairs so I wouldn't wake up my dog, and I opened up the door, but like, there was no one there. Then I heard a weird sound come from downstairs and saw that my computer was on. I'm like, I thought Miss Corona turned it off. There was a message on the screen from a hacker saying, I'm watching you? I started screaming because I don't know how to process conflict any other way. But then I was surprised to see a message that said, your outfit's cute. Listen, I'm so starved for human attraction that we fell in love. I'm Ben and you're watching Hack Into My Heart, the new reality TV show on TLC. Today I woke up sad and single for the 7,347th day of my life. As I got up to drink my water bottle full of stale Red Bull, I thought, no, this ends today. Okay, here goes nothing. Dear Zendaya, you don't know me, but I love you. This is my formal marriage proposal to you. April Fool's was yesterday, so I'm dead serious. I would love to marry you on the set of Shake It Up, but the set's actually on top of a boat in the middle of Fiji. And I've invited every Disney Channel icon. Look, there's Bertram from Jesse sitting next to Bob Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Oh, and there's Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life. Wait, why is everyone in the audience a bald man? Anyways, I invited Bella Thorne, but she couldn't make it because they stopped her at the airport because she was trying to smuggle drugs. Anyways, I truly believe you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. If I could describe how you make me feel, it's like when you see a hydraulic press video and they squish a piece of soap and it becomes little soap noodles in the air. Now, my net worth is $3 and a half you Subway gift card, so I made my own little soap noodle ring just for you. So, Zendaya, will you be my wife? Guys, please send this to her. If she sees this, I will scream. So, I was making a delicious quarantine meal of salad and licorice, aka diabetes salad, when something caught my eye outside my kitchen window. I looked across my yard to see my neighbor left a message for me. I immediately thought, bruh, I'm about to have a Taylor Swift music video love story but then I remember that my neighbor is a 72-year-old grandma named Myrtle that smells like moldy peas. I looked closer and saw that her sign just said hello. I thought, okay, she seems pretty friendly. So I grabbed some paper and decided to write a note back. I scribbled down, hi, Myrtle, and drew some hearts. I ran upstairs to my window, left it there overnight, hoping that I could have some fun with that elderly bag of bones and skin. Then the next morning, I ran upstairs to see what she'd written back. So anyways, I'm currently hiding in my basement with my dog and my Animal Crossing trying to figure out what to say back. Please help, I'll reply in part two. This little thing right here is called a window popper. What it's meant to do is pop a window if you're ever trapped in a car so you can get out. But I found that it works on any type of glass. So after I tried it on a picture frame and saw that that worked, I thought, what happens if I try and use this on my front entrance window? I'll have what he's having. Sir, this isn't a restaurant. This is death row. He's getting euthanized for killing 47 people. Ha 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 I didn't stutter. Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has don't eat cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at five in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour. This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. Oh. <laughs>
Her fridge has like 4,000 uh, vegetables and uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it. Otherwise, actually stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. <laughs> I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until <laughs> I woke up on some cliffs, on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said Please, they won't let me air fry Elizabeth, I will save you Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics Because I think I'm really good at gymnastics But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport So once I got to the airport I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo And after I took my seat I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan huh And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden the oxygen mask came down and I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... I was bored today, so I went to the mall to shoot boba tapioca zest strangers. But I didn't think I would actually hit someone, and they started chasing me, so I panicked and ran into the closest stairwell. And just when I thought I was safe, I somehow managed to drop my phone down the middle of the stairs. And I freaked out and ran to it to check if it was okay. And thankfully it was, because I had my Ultra Impact Case from Case Defy. The four shock absorbing corner bumpers keep my phone safe, while still feeling sleek and not bulky. And now that I know that I can drop my phone from over nine feet, I just drop my phone everywhere. Whenever I don't feel like bending down because my knees crack like celery every time I bend over to plug my phone into the wall. I just drop it on the floor and it's 100% fine. And guess what? You can get your own for 15% off with the code 15 high bend. And together we can have knees like Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because I filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face and got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth I was trying to sell my kidneys on the black market when I got an ad for Shein Eats, and apparently they sell food now. So I ordered some Mexican food because I was really hungry. But when it arrived, it came in what looked like a reused tissue box, and it had a fragile sticker, but it was looking more like a burrito bowl at this point. Anyways, I compared it to the picture in the ad, and it looked nothing like it. But the worst part is there was corn in it, and I'm allergic. And I was beyond mad, so I looked at the shipping label, and it said it was shipped all the way from China. So you know what I did? I was on that next flight to China, and after I boarded the plane next to the world's biggest Facebook mom with this suitcase, the food was actually pretty good, a little bit better than Shein's. But anyways, when I landed, I remembered it was the Olympics here in Beijing, so I decided to go to that instead of getting revenge on Shein. Happy Valentine's Day. Aww. 
Do you ever scroll through Instagram all day like a Coco Melon iPad baby until you see that you're somehow on Christian Mingle and you've matched with the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place? But then when you switch back to Instagram, it's down and you're like, uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, that happened to me. So I thought, well, may as well join the Amish. So I went to their website, which I was surprised they even had in the first place. And I signed myself up and gave them my address and my social security number, which I didn't really know why they needed that. But anyways, later that day, someone rang my doorbell and slipped a business card under the door. And when I picked it up, it had a number on it. So I texted the number and I I decided to ask them, so what's it like being in the Amish? And they replied, we are in Spain. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know they had the Amish in Spain. So you know what I did? I booked the next flight to Barcelona to try and join them. But when I finally got there, I turned my phone off airplane mode and the text came in. And it turns out he actually said they are in pain, not Spain, because they have no electricity. And, well, sucks to be y'all, I'm in Spain. Ole, 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 ole. Today, I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First, I was editing my name onto a hospital band, and one of the rows said sex. So I said, yes, winky face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years, and I thought it was gonna light on fire, and somehow that old mama worked, and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip, my drip, my drip, yeah. And then I tore my bed apart and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital signage. And then I laid down in my hospital bed and I made the finishing touches with a phone charger. And then I put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together. Then I finally took my Snapchat and I added a black and white filter to be all dramatic. And I made the caption, down bad, wish I had a big booty B to give me CPR. And I sent it to her. Then I ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and I put my shirt back on. And I was waiting around when she she finally replied and when I opened it she said So there was this guy on the train today who offered me a hundred bananas if I gave him a foot massage with mustard I didn't do it obviously and I'll take a lie detector test to prove it. Okay. I did not give a foot massage to a random person No You're gonna give me the bananas, 